Welcome back. It is Super Tuesday and polls are open in 16 states across America for their party primaries or caucuses. And thanks to yesterday's ruling from the Supreme Court, former President Donald Trump gets to stay on the ballot in all of them. So what does that mean for him? Well, they call it Super Tuesday because this is when the mother load of delegates will be awarded in the race for presidential nomination. And oftentimes, it's anyone's game to win, but... Oftentimes. Yeah, keyword. this year, that's not the case. The races are looking all but decided with former President Trump and President Biden leading their respective party polls. For more on this, let's bring in Democratic political strategist Crystal Knight and Republican strategist Marianne, uh, Mariana Mancuso, who's also senior advisor at Primary Pivot. Ladies, welcome back to Scripps News Live. We appreciate having you here. Marianna, I'm going to start with you because Nikki Haley, she made it to Super Tuesday. She said she would make it to Super Tuesday. She's expected to run close to Trump in Utah, Massachusetts, and Vermont. But this, well, I mean, people are saying the writing's on the wall, right? This is her final stand in the race. So the question is, where do her supporters go? Her supporters include you. you know, so really where do you go question. after this? Yeah, her supporters will go over to Joe Biden, and that's where they should go. She should not endorse Donald Trump. She's made it very clear that he's looking for a Soviet-style coronation, and she's continued to deny him. And at the end of the day, Nikki Haley does have an opportunity here to go all the way to convention in Milwaukee, so we have yet to see what will happen after this evening. Yeah, we, we can't, uh, you know, never say never in politics. You never know what's going to happen. But Crystal, I mean, when you hear that, that potentially if Nikki is out, her supporters could go over to Biden's camp. Um, what do you what do you think Biden's campaign is thinking about that? Are they banking on that, especially as he's facing challenges over, you know, the uncommitted voters? We saw that in Michigan who are unhappy with his support of Israel and recent polling showing that the conversation we have all had many times about American voters thinking he's too old to competently hold office. Well, I think, you know, what the president should be thinking, particularly as it relates to Nikki Haley, um, it's a wild card. You know, we've seen Nikki Haley waffle on a number of issues. And so while her supporters may come over to the Democratic side, we should not expect her to tell her supporters to do that. Um, as it relates to the uncommitted voters, I think, you know, this is a part of the electorate that is engaged in the issue around what is happening in the Middle East. And they are pushing the president to do more. And so as we continue to see the president and the vice president call for a ceasefire like what Kamala Harris did down in Selma, we should see those uncommitted voters come back into the fold, into the Democratic Party in droves. Hmm. Let's talk about the Supreme Court decision that came down yesterday, Mariana, um, the decision that puts Trump back on those ballots. We are still waiting for justices to decide on the presidential immunity argument. But regardless, an AP vote cast survey found that Republican primary voters don't think he did something illegal. They don't even think it's an issue. But come general election, with general voters in mind, how does the Trump campaign handle what could be become a much larger issue? The Trump campaign will continue to handle this the way that they they began when the account the counts and felonies started coming through is saying that this is going to be in the political arena. They're going to do everything in their power to run the narrative that Trump is standing in the way of them coming after the American people and that this is just a baseless witch hunt. He will not let this let his supporters see these legalities and he will continue to just try to stave it off and say this isn't a problem. This isn't a problem. But eventually every man has his day in court and justice will be served in the end. Crystal, let's talk about an issue here, the issue being the economy. A new AP NORC poll shows more than half of U.S. adults, they say the national economy is somewhat or much worse off than before Biden took office in 2021. A similar share was 55% say the country is somewhat or much worse off. Uh, so this is the continuous like messaging issue for Biden. How does he fix this, especially leading up to November now as this race is really heating up? Well, I think, one, we have to remember that polls are just a snapshot in time. And many of the people who are being polled, they may, be, they may have feelings about where the economy is or their feelings about how the president is handling and juggling multiple issues at once. As it relates to his team and his messaging, they have to do a better job. I mean, that's something that I've said before. Um, they have to, you know, really make this a state-by-state -state issue. How has the economy improved at the state-by-state -state level? what has been done um, so that folks can understand how job, you know, job growth has happened, small business growth has happened across
across their respective state, across their respective industry? And then how do you tie that into the national narrative about what the president is doing and factually how the economy actually is growing so that it reaches the voter who is in the small rural town in America and goes to the polls in support of President Biden getting another four years? Um, there are two other big issues driving voter preferences, abortion and immigration. We know immigration, there was just a survey out. Immigration is the number one issue right now for American voters. For both of you, uh, the message of each candidate on the topic, do you think that their messages are giving what, uh, the right, setting the right tone, I guess, for American voters? They're giving the American voters what they want to hear, what they need to hear. Mariana, we'll go with you first on this. Look, when it comes to the topic specifically with abortion, Republicans are going to continue to lose on this. We saw in the special election in Ohio that there was a referendum by suburban women that showed up to protect their bodies over their tax cuts, and that will continue to happen. Republicans want to squabble over whether this is the weeks on the abortion. Now they're squabbling over IVF, and at the end of the day, they will continue to lose. When it comes to immigration, immigration, they tried to use that in the special election for George Santos's race, and we saw that the Democrat Swazi won, and that is because women will continue to show up silently, make their choice and their voice heard to protect their bodies at all cost. Crystal? Well, I think on the border issue, what the president is doing is trying to put forth an agenda to get it passed. And what we see candidate Trump doing is telling members of his party not to work with the president, particularly when they've been the same ones who've said that the border issue is something that they deeply care about. As it relates to abortion, I, I agree with the other guests that you know the Republicans will continue to lose. Democrats are on the right side of this issue, making sure that women have choice at all levels um, as it relates to their health care. And so when I think about both of these, these will be key important issues coming up in, in the November election. But I think that the Democratic Party is actually doing the right thing, getting ahead of it, sharing their policy agendas and how they want to move these issues forward um, while watching the chaos that's happening on the Republican side. Democratic political strategist Crystal Knight, Republican strategist Mary Anna Mancuso, thanks so much for your time, guys.